The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We've got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets in negative territory. Apple revising their, excuse me, not Apple, Target revising their profits down just three weeks after they came out with their earnings, which were pretty harsh earnings. They're hitting the market a little bit. You have the S&Ps down about 1% right now. We're right near pre-market lows at 4,080. We were almost at 4,200 on Thursday, 4,189. So the market 110 points below that price level. We're 90 points below where we were trading at just 24 hours ago. NASDAQ 100, you're negative by 1.3% today, 165 points in the red, 12,439. The Dow off 8 tenths percent, 32,638. The Russell right now off just shy of a percent, trading at 1871. Bitcoin back under 30,000. There's a drop for you. Bitcoin drops from about 31.5 last night. Is that last night? Yes, it is. Last night, right? Yes, it is. Last night, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. You trade from 31.5 to 29,130. We're just chopping around at that price level right now for Bitcoin, down 6.5%. You got Ethereum down 6.1% right now. Crude holding pretty steady at 118.35. You get the gold contract up three dollars at 18.47, and we jump to notes and bonds. A little bit of higher price and lower yield, a slight reprieve from the lows that we got overnight. 117.22 was the low actually in the 10-year. Right now we're 118.06, backing things out. Uh, we're probably right near about 3%. I'll pull it up in a moment in terms of where we are, but we are right near that number regardless. The VIX, as the markets sell off yet again, 26.17. The VIX, not comfortable getting anywhere below 25, no matter how good this market gets. Remember, you had the S&Ps trading at almost 4,200. And meanwhile, the VIX said, we're not coming under 25, man, with the types of moves we are getting. And today, you open up 1% to the downside, negative 40 points at 4,080 for the VIX. All right, let's jump over to Target. Now, this should not have been that surprising. I mean, I guess you get a revision down of profits. You're down $12 right now, trading at 147. You closed at almost 160 for Target. For some context of where this was prior to their announcement, prior to their earnings, they were trading at 211 coming into that last earnings event. You open the next day at a price point of about 162. You did trade as low as 155, intraday at least. I'm not sure what happened in the overnight session. Maybe we can even pull it back. How far back do we have to go? Will the four hour show it? No, it doesn't show the pre-market on the four hour, I don't think. Maybe that is it. Yeah, nonetheless, we get to a low of 155.20 on the day of their earnings. We chop around for a bit. You see the action, I think it does incorporate the overnight pre-market action for Target. Market going to open right at that level. You jump over to Walmart shares, as expected, down a few dollars. Back to a 15-minute chart for Walmart. They trade lower on that news as well. They're probably going to be hit in similar fashion. If Target has to re, I mean, three weeks, they have to re revise everything. Sinks after cutting profit view over inventory pain. This is one of the things that they talked about in their earnings that was so harsh on the stock that made it trade so lower. Second quarter operating margin of about 2%. Now the company says it will cancel orders and mark down more goods. Well, I'm pretty sure that probably had to be the plan when they had way too much inventory as of three weeks ago, but it looks like things are even accelerating. Uh, so they are lower. They cut its prof their profit outlook for the second time in three weeks. That's a tough one, man. Op um, might as well have just taken all their licks at once on that earnings event. Operating profit will amount to about 2% of sales in the current quarter well below its May 18th prediction that the gauge would be in a wide range around 5.3%. I mean, couldn't they have just taken their licks? Why they have to be so optimistic that they put their operating profit at 5.3%, giving themselves room around that number, and they're going to come in at 2% in the current quarter. Uh, they see operating margin rising to about 6% in the second half of the year, though the retailer shares 
uh, were down as much as almost 10% on their trading. So quite a revision if they do bounce back to 6%. But I bet the market's saying, hold on a second. We're supposed to believe you of bouncing back to 6% in the second half of the year. Meanwhile, three weeks ago, you told us that you were going to make possibly 5.3% in the current quarter for operating profit. And now you're telling us you're going to make 2%. That's 21 days counting weekends, folks. That's only 15 working days they had to revise those profits from 5.3% with a wide area of variation down to 2%. I mean, you can't overstate it. Just a, a mammoth revision. Uh, in addition, the company will offload excess inventory and adjust some prices to address the impact of unusually high transportation and fuel costs. Well, Offloading excess inventory and adjust some prices. Target is seeking to get a handle on supply chain disruption by adding incremental holding capacity near U.S. ports, which will give it greater flexibility. Yeah, many of these companies trying to uh, shore up their supply chain to avoid some of the variables that they're facing that are hurting them. But, man, it seems like this should have been expected. They probably just didn't revised down the way they needed to on earnings. But one of the things I said in my household when those numbers came out, I said, man, there's going to be some great sales at Target coming up. That's the case, folks. Of course there are. They got way too much inventory right now as personal spending habits at least shifted enough where they're stuck holding the bag with a lot of products that did not sell to the degree, degree that they thought they were going to. The only way to do get rid of that, folks, is to unload it. These companies do not, they are not in the business of storing old inventory and hoping that a year or so down the line they run through it or two. Uh, you know, fashion, trends change. They don't do that. They get rid of that inventory. At least that's what I think a good company would do. You don't want to sit on that inventory. Uh, all that is is a bad mistake from the past that could hurt you. You get rid of it. You get rid of it for whatever you can. Because it's not selling. And if it's not selling, don't hold on to it for a year or two. That's what they have to do. There's going to be some good sales at Target, man. There's going to be probably some good sales at Walmart, especially in the areas that they've overbuilt some of that. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. But Target, you're going to open down 12 bucks. Walmart's going to open down about 2% as well on those numbers. Let's see how Amazon's trading right now. Down about $3, Amazon. Uh, Amazon, they give back all of the gains that they had yesterday up to 129 man. Now, 129, let's say we're trading at 122 for simple math right now. Uh, we're trading at 121.90 is the ask. That's a $7 move to the downside. And we now need to multiply that, folks, by 20. If we were talking about just Friday's action, that's a $140 move in the price of Amazon prior to the split. It's still a nine dollars move in a $128 stock for Amazon. Apple had their Worldwide Developer Conference yesterday. They're trading lower today. You got the NASDAQ 100 off 1.5% right now. Dow's approaching 1%. s and is greater than 1% in the negative right now. Uh, market, not going to like that target news. Might be indicative of what's coming down the line. The whole conversation, right? I'm sure many of you have heard it is are we going to get earnings revisions are the earnings revisions coming well you just got it from target man and you got it from target within three weeks of them trading down 20 percent on already disclosing that things are vastly troubling uh in terms of the numbers they're dealing with at least now you know i would say folks if you get the type of turnaround they're looking for that you're getting to areas but you could begin scaling in on some of these equities. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the show, but we're going to be well below that 618 when we open on Target. We'll be right back with our man, Kevin Hicks. Stay tuned, folks. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P futures negative by about 40 points right now. That's about 1% in the red. NASDAQ 100 negative by 1.3% in the red right now. You got target trading lower on their cut of their profits coming up this quarter. Right now, let's jump it over to our man, Kevin Hanks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, Fast Market on the TD Ameritrade Network with your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White. Outstanding program. They break down the day's market action, folks. Talking about hypothetical trade setups, talking defined risk on every trade they set up using options. Kevin Hinks, what do you think about this target action this morning, man? Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. I believe that there's a patio furniture sale going on this week at Target right. as they get rid of some uh, inventory. You know, it's interesting. I don't think this is necessarily horrible news for Target because... They talked about their margins going from 5.3 to 2% as they get rid of this inventory. But then the back half of the year, they expect margins back up to 6%. Unfortunately, as you know, Tom, in a microwave world, so the reaction is going to be harsh and swift. So they're going to have a, uh, a, you know, a rough day here or a couple rough days. And, the frankly, the retail sector is going to get hit with, with, with that as well. But, you know, they they made a pretty positive statement, as positive as they could on this. Um, but, you know, it, it's a problem, right? They, they're moving from discretionaries uh, to more essentials, and looks like they've got to work their way through some a bunch of inventory. So uh, it's going to be a tough day or so for Target. It's also going to be a tough day for some of the buy now, pay later stocks. As Apple surprised everyone getting into the buy now, pay later business. I thought that was interesting yesterday. You know, that took down a firm, that took down Square, that took down a bunch of these names like that. So uh, it's, you know, Tommy, it's interesting. It's not a, it's not a big week for economic data till we get uh, CPI out on Friday. It's not a big week for earnings as we're in the back half, the final home stretch here of earnings season. But there's always something. That's why this is such a great business. There's always something to keep you busy. You know, it's crazy. You did a great job of going over Target um, and the numbers and the revision, 5.3 down to 2. Uh, only three weeks ago they had earnings, Kevin. I was saying, man, that's only 21 days ago. That's only 15 working days. 
Then in 15 working days, they decide to come back to the public with that revision. But the second half of the year, yeah, 6% they're talking about. Um, I'm not so sure I would believe a company and not even talking about Target if they had such a revision three weeks ago, Kevin, right? How can you be so sure where the numbers are going to be in the second half of the year, though, as my brain goes there a little bit at least? Um, so tough to, to forecast where we are. But I did say uh, when they had those numbers – Three weeks ago, Kevin, I came home. I said, there might be some sales going on at Target soon, man, because they got so much inventory. Turns out that's going to be the case. And right before I went to break, before this segment, uh, I hesitate to say so, right, because you, you have a stock. And this is my opinion, folks. All right. We can all be wrong in the market. But you, you come down from 254. You were at 140. Two, that's 254 April 18th, less than two months ago in Target. You're going to open at 147. I have a price in 2019, Kevin that this thing was trading at 129. So you're at 130, you're within about $17 of where you are in 2019 prices. Maybe an area that you could begin to scale in if you're looking for a longer term position in Target. It's it's dicey, but I did in the in the similar fashion. You know, it's like second half of the year, if those numbers come true, I imagine there's gonna be some value in some of these companies if they turn it around, but some tough numbers to start things off. You guys did some action on Amazon yesterday. What do you think of the move on Amazon? I was talking about in the beginning of the program, man. From yesterday's high to this morning, Kevin, you're talking about a $7 move for a stock that just split 20 for one. That would have been a $140 move as of Friday's action on Amazon, almost right back to where we closed, Friday's number. Yeah, interesting. You know, not really surprising as that new price makes it attractive to a whole new group of people. You know, let's face it, Tommy, $124 for Amazon looks pretty attractive when it used to be, you know, 3000 not very long ago. So, and here's what uh, one point that I made that's very important. Amazon was very hard to obviously buy 100 shares of stock, right? And it was also hard to trade options on. That is going to be much different now. If you had, if you had 10 shares of Amazon, right? You've got now a position that you can hedge with options. You didn't have that before. So I think the biggest beneficiary is it's going to look different to a bunch of retail investors, and the option market is going to explode in Amazon. So that's the, the, the take that I get of a stocksman. It doesn't change the company fundamentally, but it makes it more palatable to a whole new tranche of investors, Tommy. It's a great point, man. I hadn't even gone there. That's why we talk to you every day. That's why we listen to you at 12 noon. Because uh, I've tried to pull up some Amazon option trades, man. And just you're talking about tens of thousands of dollars, 20,000 grand right. easy um, for for especially for a multi-leg position, something like that. The the, the volatility, um, each side of it at the money, what, $200, $300 sometimes when it was trading at $3,000 um, per a contract. So pretty cool. 122 is where we are on Amazon. I'll tell you, Kevin, I got a text last night from my sister, okay? And she's a couple years younger than I am. And she's literally thinking, folks, and I, I said, it's not a bad idea, um, longer term of maybe buying some Amazon and maybe putting a little money into a Roth IRA to get it done because she heard of a stock split. So there's a little anecdotal, man, but she's not the only one um, because $3,000, $4,000 a share she wasn't willing to do that at 120 bucks a share. She's willing to buy some Amazon, man. So pretty cool. With that in mind, Kevin, what are you guys talking about on the program coming up at 12 today? Fast market. A couple good names today, Tommy. First and foremost, we'll look at Am or Exxon Mobil. We'll stay in the energy space as it's been the most popular. Then like Folio is going to do a presentation on Teladoc. And then Ooh. we'll look at five below the, the retailer that is just doing incredible things. They have earnings coming out as well this week. So uh, ExxonMobil, Teladoc, and Five Below. Nice. And is Teladoc, is that the one um, that Kathy Woods is big in? Um, yes. I forget. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one, man. She is big in there. They came out with those tough earnings left. Yeah, look at this chart. From 308 down to $34. Some of these stocks, man, remarkable, uh, the moves they've had. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time. As always, man, we'll be watching at 12 today, and you have a great one. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too, Kevin. Folks, tune in every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time. Outstanding programs. You heard the stocks they're talking about. Uh, this one's an interesting one. I was checking this one out recently, Teladoc. Uh, that's where I think the future's going, man, telehealth. 
But, boy, you talk about some pullbacks, man. Kathy Woods, uh, I'll try and pull up where this is in her position in terms of her holdings. Let me check it out. I got the site up right here because it is a decent position, I believe. Yeah, the number seven position in ARC uh, Holdings, Teladoc. She's got a $5.6 billion position in this equity, uh, representing a 7.2% ownership in Teladoc. So she's still a believer because when she cuts ties, man, she cut ties with uh, Zillow. Remember, she cut ties with Zillow the day they came out and said, nope, we can't buy and sell houses. That's not the future. Uh, I think she sold the entire position within a few days. Not so much the case. Number one position for her, Zoom. Zoom Holdings uh, representing what she got in there. No, that's the whole company. Okay, I'll go over it again because that's the whole company's market cap. I'll go over it again. She's got a 400 million position in Teladoc. She's got 817 million position in Zoom. We'll talk about it when we get back, folks. Stay tuned. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open right now. You're looking at an S&P opening down 36 points. That's 9 tenths percent in the red, Three, uh, 4,084. Excuse me. NASDAQ 100, you open down about 1.1 percent. Markets catch a little bit of a bid coming into the opening bell. Dow off 252 right now, 32,656. And uh, how about Bitcoin? Yeah, 29,500. You're right back at the lows of Wednesday and Friday's action on Bitcoin. Be careful in that crypto market, folks. Crude oil sitting at 118.28. We'll talk to our man Teddy Kegstad tomorrow at 40 past the hour. He's been calling that oil market pretty remarkably well. You check out a weekly, man. I mean, taking this thing off, it's a one-way trip from $6 to 130 folks. Imagine that trade. 
And really, if you recall, this is the continuous contract. April, I believe, was the month that went haywire with the, the current month expiring at what? Negative $30, $40, something like that is what that actually went to. $6.50 on the continuous to a straight shot upwards. I mean, that's a pretty well-defined channel line, and you're still pushing highs uh, in a remarkable fashion at 118.31. Okay, jumping back real quick, because I was talking about <clears throat> Teladoc, which they'll be talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12. You're down 2% right now for this equity. And boy, they had a huge revision, okay, with a bunch of negative stuff in it on their last earnings. You traded from 55 to under 30 Okay, cannot overstate that I have no idea of the fundamentals of this company, folks. I have no action in it. I have bought none of it, okay? But at some level, generally, telehealth is going to be the future. It is coming. And that's probably why Kathy Wood uh, has a position in this equity. She's probably lost a substantial amount of money, though, depending on when she got into it. Three-year weekly, well below where we came into COVID. You came into COVID at... 80. I mean, imagine that. You came into COVID at 81 bucks running a telehealth company. And fast forward through the pandemic, you're sitting at 27. A lot of these companies, just a lot of mismanagement in how they went. I mean, look at this. You're back to 2017 prices. Imagine how the landscape should have changed, at least for a company trying to operate in a telehealth fashion. Okay, to get over to her positions <clears throat> real quick, uh, these are, yes, her holdings. So number one is Zoom, $817 million. That's 9.6% of ARK, okay? And this is the main fund, A-R-K-K. -K. They have the other ones down, broken down here too. And this site I just pulled up, kathysark.com. It tracks that, it tracks trades. If you're ever trying to see what she's doing, I find it just easy to pull that information up. Zoom is number one. Tesla had been number one for the longest time. Tesla now sits at $724 million in terms of the position. Roku's number three. Square, some of these equities, it never stops, right? Kevin was just talking about it. So Apple, one of the things they came out with yesterday, Square continuing the drop down 3.3% today. I think there was the news <clears throat> yesterday when they started talking about the news that Apple was going to get into buy now, pay later. <coughs> Excuse me, you have Square trading lower, and Kevin mentioned it, a firm. And here's what I'll say about these equities as well. When something doesn't make sense to you folks, yes, it can persist for a period of time. Have your stops in place. But listen to yourself as well. There is no reason the companies that are using these firms, a firm, like Amazon has a deal with a firm, right? I think that's part of the reason why it went bonkers up to 176 at one point last year, that they were going to be signed some type of deal. Why does Amazon need a middleman like a firm to exist? They can obviously offer their own. This company is still valued at $6.3 billion, okay? What was it pushing? It's pushing, what, $30, $40, $50 billion when it was trading up to these levels? Why do the largest companies in the world need to use a company when all they're basically doing is providing an interest-free loan to the consumer? Now, yes, you get into credit risk, you get into all those things, and I'm sure there are fundamental factors that that is not Amazon's business, that is not Apple's business, but guess what? It's Apple's business now, and I bet it's gonna become Amazon's business soon too, because there's no reason why they can't get into this. There's no reason why Amazon needs to use a third-party company like a firm to facilitate a buy now, pay later approach to servicing their customers. Uh, these stocks tanking hard, so we'll see. Yeah, jumping over to some of the home stocks. Getting hit probably uh, to the tune of, of Target revisions. Home Depot down 3.08% right now. Target shares down 6.0% right now. Walmart shares down 2.2%. Lowe's shares down 2.75%. Uh, some of the other retailers, different story. Look at that. Macy's trades down and gets a pop at the open. Macy's positive today by three-tenths percent in terms of where we are on Macy's shares. Jump to Nordstrom's, down 1.5%. Market's almost down 1% right now. Coal shares trading higher, up 10%. What's going on for Coals?
Okay, so it looks like there is a development on that bid. So they've entered into exclusive relationships, uh, negotiations with Franchise Group. And yeah, there were a couple bids that were listed prior. Franchise Group, uh, the highest bid, I think, at around $60. So the stock trades up to almost 49 from 42. You're trading at 4586 right now. Uh, volatility. And I think maybe this was the story that came out here, talking about two potential suitors for Kohl's, that they had a couple bids, but they were even talking about that within their last earnings that were pretty decent. Yeah, that was their earnings day that they expected final bids to be submitted within about a few weeks. That's about a few weeks ago. So I guess they're pretty close to that timeline. s and is rebounding a little bit. You know, for the tough day that you get a revision like that from Target, folks, the market could be down a lot more. You know, you're seeing it hit some of the stocks, but S&P is only down 7 tenths percent. Let's see how Amazon is trading some of the FANG stocks. Amazon gets hit on that news down 2.5 percent right now. We jump to some of the other tech companies. Apple shares down half a percent right now. We'll talk a little bit about Apple later in the show as well. Microsoft shares down 6 tenths percent right now. Google shares down 6 tenths percent. Facebook down 2 percent, excuse me, 2 tenths percent. Let's see how Twitter's trading. Look at that rebound. Twitter back to $40. This stock, watch out, man. Let's jump to some of the meme stocks. GameStop up about six tenths percent. AMC. Look at this one, man. How is this? Twelve bucks. Now you got to get a full context of the move here. Remember that you were at a dollar ninety one in twenty twenty one. You came into COVID, okay, at eight dollars on this stock. Things were already having problems at the movie theaters. Yes, the movie theaters. Maybe this was the rebound that they needed in terms of people wanting to get back out because for a foreseeable period of time, the way the landscape was changing, some movies go into streaming, very difficult to make money. And you had AMC coming into the beginning of 2020 at about $8. You're sitting at 12 but that stock does not look like strength, folks. It does not look like strength at all, even though I believe that uh, movies are going to be something that we'll be doing for a while. People are going to want to have those experiences again for some considerable period of time. I mean, we're seeing that play out to the with the airlines to some degree, but it's playing out so much <clears throat> that uh, they got to pay for oil as Delta just continues to chop right around the 382, oscillating around on both sides of that. You jump to United right now, United 4479. Let's see, that's probably right around the 382 as well. Yeah, pretty close. Uh, 4484 right now, you're barely positive for United. American. Actually sitting at the 618 of rate basic move. Probably the best one out there domestically. Southwest sitting at about the 50% of the entire move, 44 bucks. And don't touch JetBlue just yet, folks. Sitting at $10.56. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, folks. We'll take a look at Apple, some of their stuff that they had out yesterday. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Yeah, so they were talking about in the den, the dollar move, especially versus the yen, man. We're going to be talking to our man Teddy Kegstad tomorrow, but check out that move. That's a tough one on the gold contract, man. You got the yen up to 132.72, well above the previous highs we had. Look at these last few days, man. We were just trading in the yen May 27th at 126. You're at 132. And what is that? Three, six, seven bars. You got excluding the weekends in terms of that action well above those highs uh we'll get his take on where that yen is trading tomorrow at 40 past the hour all right back to the markets right now you look at an s p <clears throat> down about 28 points we jump over to apple share so apple has their worldwide developer conference yesterday you're negative by about one tenth percent they announced they're doing buy now pay later that tanks those stocks uh apple to see the action it had yesterday uh not a lot of good action trading lower from about 148.50 to 145.50, you had the market with some volatility at that time as well in terms of there's your market action trading lower. So was Apple driving the market or was market driving Apple? Uh, you got a lot of negative action across the board. Apple trading lower with the market, not really a move on their worldwide developer conference. Most of the stuff was known besides maybe the buy now, pay later, which was definitely an announcement. One cool thing uh, that my friend shared that was out and I think this is maybe new. Maybe it's new in some of their software. No matter what it is, man, it is pretty cool. I just wanted to share it with you. Uh, yeah, so it's a tweet last night. And what it's talking about is, so this is out at 4.30. Maybe it's some of the new beta software out there. I'm not sure. If anybody knows in the Tiger's Den, let me know if they did announce something like this or if it's just been something that exists. But you talk about AI. You talk about um, just future uses of technology. So what this is doing is the phone is 3D mapping the room that they're in. And you can see the map that it's creating on the bottom. This is just a phone. You can see that the room is literally, uh, excuse me, the phone is literally shaping the room, designing it, and, and putting it into 3D shape on the bottom as you're just scanning the room. All right, the video is only about 20, 25 seconds. And if you pay attention to the small area on the bottom, you can see it actually building it out in real time. AI, the room you're in, the walls that exist, uh, windows, fridges, cabinets, stoves, um, sinks, everything. It's able to build out this entire 3D model in the span of about 25 seconds from your phone recognizing a 3D environment and AI. Uh, pretty cool technology. And when you talk about whether it's AI, you talk about you know self-driving cars, you talk about robots running around the house. Uh, there's a lot of cool applications for this. Imagine, you know, in real estate, uh, you walk into any home now, you can take your phone, do a 360 spin around, and you immediately have every single plan down to the literal inch of that house and design in your phone saved forever. It's pretty cool where that technology is going to be going, in my opinion. All right. In terms of what we have going on this week, folks, Friday, 
My dad's doing an all-day timing the trade methodology webinar. He'll be going over uh, his methodology from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. He has not done one of these in over two years. Uh, he'll probably do one again in the future, but not sure, folks. It could be another year or two. If you've never been to one, it's a great time. You get his physical book mailed to you, The Art of Timing the Trade. That sells for $88 on Amazon. You get a month of his newsletter, which is $169, okay? And the total cost is $295. So 88 plus 169, that's a value of 257 alone, just from the book and the newsletter. The course, the webinar, all day, 295 includes those two. Uh, this will be archived, so if you can't go to all five hours, you can check it out as often as you'd like. 9 a.m. till noon on Friday is the first session. You take a 30-minute break for lunch, 12.30 till two, a 90-minute session to finish it out. Quality volume. ABC structures, Fibonacci's, confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points. He'll be talking about all of it. And when you do sign up, you instantly gain access to Market Insights. You'll be able to follow that for a few days till Friday. And we will be ending signups, folks, on Thursday night. Okay? So I know all of us are procrastinators. We wait till the end. Unfortunately, when that happens, People can rush in all at the last second, uh, and they if you have any problems getting into the room, we deal with the flood of phone calls, emails. Uh, so we're going to end signups and take down the sign-up form Thursday when we leave the office at about 4.30 in the afternoon. So you'll have time to sign up through then, but check it out. If you sign up, you gain access to Market Insights immediately. We'll send the book to you. You may not receive the book before the course because it's physically mailed to you, but you'll receive that as well. 295 bucks, that takes place on Friday. And yeah, we got a great market, man, for these types of webinars right now. You got a market that's moving 1% today. Easy. s and is catching a little bit of a pop. That's a 15-minute bar. It's all green so far on the open. We open at about 4,080. We're pushing 4,100 right now in the S&Ps as the markets claw back some of those losses. Let's see how Target is trading. Yeah, it claws back some of it. I mean, you just got back almost $8 from the low it had. Yeah, more than $8 now. It's Target off 5%, off $8 right now at 151.75. And here's what I'll say. You know, there is a lot of unforeseen variables that are coming down the line, folks. CPI is Friday. The Fed meets next week. I'd say the CPI has a lot more variable in it this Friday than the Fed does coming down the line next week. Fed's going to hike by 50 basis points, and they're going to say, basically, we just started this. We have to wait for the data. Okay, That's what they're going to say. But if you believe Target that they're going to be back to 6% margins in the second half of this year, I'd imagine there's we are at least approaching an area of value. Uh, they traded lower when they thought it was going to be 5.3% margins this quarter, though, and the market still sent them down to $157 in their last earnings. So that doesn't quite solve that scenario, but Target, you're almost back to 2019 prices where you were pushing 129 on this equity. You're trading right now at 151, and we touched about 143 pre-market on Target shares this morning, down from 268. So you touch 143. I mean, what is that? 134 is a 50% pullback of the entire price of Target at 268. Let's see how Walmart's faring. Down about 2%. Walmart sitting right at about the 618. Walmart, similar deal. Walmart back to 2019 prices as well. Just from some of the pullbacks going on. All right, let's jump around, see what else we have going on in this market. Let me pull up the screen. Yeah, this one was interesting. Just so that the Lendo Metal Exchange, yeah, they're going to get sued over shutting down trading uh, in nickel. So they got a couple lawsuits uh, that are filed. And yeah, I would make so. I would think so. So Elliott Associates filed a suit for $456 million relating to the same chaotic morning. I mean, they just shut down trading and canceled trades due to a spike in volatility, which saw nickel prices double. If that's how it works, folks, we're in the wrong game because thankfully that's not how it works. Uh, there are rules to the game. People make decisions on those rules. You cannot just shut down the pits. Uh, but guess what? They can and they did. And that's what happened, which is pretty remarkable. I would never, ever be trading on that. Sometimes you have to if you're in that industry, I guess, or what it is. Um, but yeah, that is a ridiculous statement. The Lend and Metal Exchange being over there just shutting down trading because volatility spiked it too high. There were people that were looking for that type of volatility squeeze, right? That were making trades on that type of a move. All right. 
Let's jump around to other companies with their uh, with volatility. So you have James Smucker. They have their earnings. We got a couple companies with earnings this week. Uh, let's see. They're a little bit lower in the pre-market, despite better than expected quarterly results. Inflation, supply chain issues, and other factors continue to impact results and increase uncertainty. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Markets charging back from a little negative action. You got the S&Ps up above 4,100, trading at 4,101. You got the NASDAQ 100. Look at that charge, man. You just gained about 150 points, 12,538. Dow off 169 right now. The Russell only negative by five. Jump over to Bitcoin. Really no bid there, man. 29,600. Ethereum trading down $97.1765 right now. Yeah, you take a look at these longer term in terms of where you are on Ethereum. I guess that's as far back as Ethereum goes. Uh, trading at 1765, but you're below kind of critical lower levels in terms of where you were. Yeah, you made it to 1697, I guess. You made it to 1715, but the bodies of these candles above where we're trading at right now in Ethereum and Bitcoin, I mean, the trend, not even talking about the trend. That trend's been broken, man. I had that on my chart for a while ago, but just looking at where we are right here, right? Just that area that had been support. Very, very critical to breaking that area right now at 29,610. And if we break that area, 
ten thousands in play, not twenty thousand, because it was a one-way trip over a period of about two and a half months from ten to thirty-five thousand to kick off two thousand twenty-one. Remarkable. All right, the other article I want to talk up, uh, talk about up here, is a Bloomberg article talking about Taiwan Semiconductor, talking about Taiwan, talking about China. The a top economist in China, okay, on basically uh, China State TV. Talks about seizing Taiwan Semiconductor if the U.S. were to ever ramp up sanctions to Russia-level degree. It's just one of those things you want to keep on your radar, folks. I don't think we're there just yet, but Dave White talks about it all the time, and it is a very real threat. I do not think that China is going to go the route of Russia um, and doing anything to risk those types of sanctions, because no matter what they do, that will hurt their plan for future prosperity. But when push comes to shove... Taiwan and the chips that get made at Taiwan Semiconductor are crucial to China, and they know that. Uh, senior Chinese economist at a government-run research group uh, called on authorities to seize Taiwan Semiconductor. And they go on that that video was just released. It was last month, I believe, or April. Uh, nonetheless, one of those risks, man. And eventually, unfortunately, that risk is going to play out to some degree over the next X amount of years. All right, folks, thanks for starting your day. Stay tuned. Basil's up next. Larry at 11, Fast Market at 12. Steve, Dave, 